stem cell count in the blood does not reach a certain plateau, you will not get well. But if it does, you can recover from the stroke. And we all know we've had, I'm sure you've all had uh, relatives or somebody that you know has had a stroke and the doctor always says the same thing. We don't know how they're going to do. We have to wait and see if they get better. Sometimes they'll get some of it back. Sometimes they'll get all of it back. Sometimes they'll get none of it back. Well, it turns out to be the, um, your, the ability of the patient to produce a cellular response to that injury. That determines whether you're going to have a high adult stem cell count and get better or not. And we know that elderly patients often can't produce a cellular response to fix the problem. For example, if you think a patient has appendicitis, you're going to get a white blood cell count. Chances are, if there's no elevated white blood cell count, there's no appendicitis, but not. It's not true if it's an older patient. If the patient's 80, 90 years old, we don't even expect an elevated white blood cell count because they, their bone marrow is so worn down that they can't mount the cellular defense. Same exact thing with uh, adult stem cells. Let's look in the heart. If you're endothelial precursor adult stem cell number is too low, it means you have atherosclerosis. It means that your body was not able to keep up with the repairing the damage of the inner lining cells of your arteries. And the day that happens, you start to get this this atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease strokes, peripheral vascular disease, and the rest. Uh, if you can maintain a high enough EPC level, I can predict you don't have, and this has been published, of course almost no doctors know this, they're always shocked when I tell them these, the, 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 the business about the stroke and the cell number and the business about the EPCs and the heart, they don't know it. Every mother has their baby cells living inside their liver, in their heart, in their brain, because the adult stem cells in a baby cross the placenta, and they're much more powerful than uh, adult, you know, older person cells. The, 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 speed with which they can reproduce and produce cytokines is enormous when they're in a newborn. And uh, so this turns out to be a survival advantage. Now, nowhere else in biology do we see cells transferable from one person to another. I can't be taking your cells and putting them over into this person. They'll get rejected. But Adult stem cells provided the mother with an, a survival, a, 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 a Darwinian survival advantage. And the mothers who made, had immune systems that killed their babies, adult stem cells, vanished. So after years and years of evolution, all we have left are mothers that can tolerate their, their babies' adult stem cells. And their babies produce adult stem cells that would be tolerated because it made the mother and the baby survive to keep, it, keep those genetics within the gene pool, okay? It's called maternal microchimerism. And it is proof positive that nature itself likes the idea of an allogeneic stem cell transfer, an allogeneic meaning from someone else and especially if they're from baby cells, which don't seem to kick up the immune response and get themselves killed in the bargain, okay? Now, fat, adult stem cells, for some reason, nobody understands, and uh, it isn't really important. It's just important that it's fact. They go up and down as you get sick. So let's say you're five years old and you get the flu and you're home from school recuperating in your bed, 
your adult stem cell number is going sky high in your blood so that it can go and replace the dying cells from whatever it is that's making you sick. Well, they get trapped in fat, and they get trapped in fat faster if, they, uh, if the number is high in the blood. And it's just like the Roach Hotel. You get in, but you can't get out. But more than that, when they get in the fat, they fall asleep because they can't get out. They can't go heal your body. They're not part of the general adult stem cell pool in your bone marrow that's constantly healing your body for the rest of your life. They just go to sleep. Well, when they go to sleep, they don't age. They stay robust. So if we do a little liposuction, take some of those adult stem cells out of your fat, take them out of their fat trap, they're now young you, <laughs> your stem cells that are very youthful. I mean, if you got sick at one, you got a bunch in there that were one year old, a bunch that were uh, your whole life, they're, the whole range, they're all in there. And the younger they were trapped in the fat, the younger and more robust they're going to be to heal you. And that's the methodology. Do a little liposuction, take the stem cells, and then put them back into the, comp the blood compartment where they can get at your, your damage. I want to make sure I said everything. All right. And the FDA, our FDA, your government, says that you can't do this. Our doctors can't do this. We're not allowed to take the cells out of your fat and give them to you to help you get well. It is illegal. And that's a goddamn absurdity. I've been a physician for 30 years. I never saw anything so absurd in all my life. It's a damn shame. And I need your help to try to change it. Prayer is indeed good. But while calling on the gods, a man should himself lend a hand. And uh, as you know, uh, Dr. Neil Reardon, uh, started Metastem. I was the first chief medical officer. We went overseas. And I didn't relish the fact, quite honestly. I went to the best uh, uh, medical schools and, and uh, universities. I didn't really feel like going, you know, to some place that's not where I live to, to do this work. And uh, thank God we have uh, 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 Dr. Paz that has uh, continued this down there and, and making strides that are unbelievable and proving concept. This is proof of concept. It's already been done. Why we can't do this in this country is uh, a bit insane. But of course, as you know, uh, they've had great luck in uh, treating multiple sclerosis, uh, myocardiopathy. We've taken, we've taken patients from the jaws of death with myocardiopathy. Uh, and let me see, Arizona, which is where I'm from. And the, uh, the governor, who you probably have heard about, she's actually a patient of mine, cut off funding for heart transplants because they're just so expensive. And, and, and I, I talk about in my book one of the heart transplant uh, patients that were was waiting for a heart transplant but couldn't afford it, uh, th those cost $250,000. We treated them. Turned out we treated them for nothing, but uh, it would have cost $20,000. You could go right across America now and take all those patients that are dying of non-ischemic myocardiopathy and get them treated and save the state all that money. But it's illegal. Autism horrible problem. What autism does to families, you don't want to know. And we've, been, we've, been, we've had great success with that. Cerebral palsy. And we might not be able to make someone completely whole, but it's not uncommon to be able to change their neurologic status enough to maybe feed themselves or change their, what their life is like and their caretakers' life alike. Rheumatoid arthritis, extremely successful. Muscular dystrophy, spinal cord damage, 
So every hundred years, we've got something that happens, and now we've got the adult stem cell healing organ system, except it's illegal. Stem cell therapeutics is going to improve the human condition, just like vaccines and, and antibiotics. It's an eventuality. The thing is that most of the people in this room, including me, will be dead by the time they get around to letting it be legal, let our wonderful doctors start to work on it and focus on it. It's less costly than the status quo and it's more effective and it's more natural. It's less invasive and less painful. If every person in this book doesn't buy my book and send a copy to their doctor and their congressman, I swear to God, I'd like to kill you all. <laughs> Please. This information has to get through. All right. Our health care cost crisis. It cost us in the United States 18% of our GDP for health care. The next highest... Uh, the next highest country is France at 11%, and then it drops off precipitously after that. We pay vastly more than any other country for our health care. And yet, the World Health Organization epidemiologic uh, analysis in two, published in 2000 showed that we, our citizens come in 73rd. There were 72 countries that have healthier uh, citizens than we do, and clearly the health of your citizens is a damn good measure of how good your health care system is. And then when they look disease-specific, in other words, are you better off if you're going to have diabetes, mellitus, to be born in the United States or in India? We came in 37th. We're getting ripped off royally. Our health care cost crisis has nothing to do with how we pay for medical care. It's the medical care we're paying for that's no good. And yet, distraction after distraction. What is it about America? We just get one distraction after another. Oh, don't look over here. Don't look at medicine. Look at how we pay for it. It isn't the, it's, it's wrong. It's, it's so obvious when you, when you have enough information to see it. And yet, the FDA, in their wisdom, decides they're going to outlaw. Now, remember, the FDA already said it's okay for surgeons to take some fat out of your butt and put it in your face if you're wrinkled or you want plump lips. That's legal. But if you put it to help someone with MS, it's illegal. So there's no... You can see there's no medical reason for this. This is political, pure and simple. Let's say in, you figured out how to use something natural like vitamin C and make a cure for something, and you're 90% successful. Okay? But at the same time, a drug company has to made a new molecule, which they can make molecules. You just have to dream up a molecule to make it. And it only cures 10%. In our system, the 90% cure is never, ever going to happen. You're never going to get it because it's not patentable. Things that are natural, like adult stem cells or vitamin C, are too natural. You can't get a patent protection on it. So where are you going to get the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to prove that it works? And what do, the, what do the people high up in medicine that I got to feel are somehow uh, 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 involved in this, what do, they say, what do they say to you immediately? Where's your proof? Where's your proof? Where's your proof? Well, I don't happen to have a couple of hundred million dollars on me. So how is this going to happen? What I want to do is get our American doctors to be able to use this. Adult stem cells never harm anyone. They're harmless. Why would they? Babies give them to their mother. Uh, there's no way that adult stem cells are going to hurt you. The worst thing that can happen if you're treated with adult stem cells is nothing. So why can't we just open the doors, let our American doctors treat their patients with this inexpensive, 